Writers, it's Megan coming at you live in the All Writers Welcome Facebook group, and we are also over at allwriterswelcome.com. And today's topic for writing on Thursdays is top five ways to use tells in your writing. And this is continuing the conversation from last week where we talked a little bit about shows and tells in general. And now I want to get into some specifics about how to use tells and how to get excited about using tells, not to feel like, oh man, I can't show everything and I have to tell. Tells are exciting. Yay! Get excited about using tells. All right. So if you um, want to ask a question about showing versus telling, I invite you to write in the comments. And let me start by saying what I mean by tells. Um, most writers get the advice, show, don't tell. And the nugget of wisdom in that advice is that as much as you can, you want to give your readers the experience of being there. We read books because we want to be in a world. If I just want to know what the book was about, I'd ask, ask somebody who read it for a summary or I would, you know, read the, the back of the book. But I read a book because I want to know what's going on. So that's the nugget of wisdom behind this idea that you should show, not tell. But that is too simple a statement to say, don't tell, because there are five times when telling is way better than showing and where it's actually going to enhance your writing. So I'm gonna count them down, starting at number five and going down to my number one favorite that might surprise you. Ooh, ooh. In fact, the number one um, time to tell and way to use tells is something that um, hmm, helps you show better. Like you won't be able to be really good at using shows in your writing unless you know the number one tip for tells. Ooh. Okay, so start by counting them down. My number five top way to use tells in your writing is to summarize, you know, tell us about the things we need to know as readers for clarity or context that don't have an emotional significance. What do I need to know before I can understand this really cool scene with a lot of emotional significance that you're going to show me? Give me the backstory, right? I don't need to see all of that happening and unfolding in real time. I just want, you know, what's the important information I need? summarize events. Tell us, give us the big picture. Tell us overall. Um, that might be circumstances of the world you're building. If you have an interesting setting, it might be things about the character's background, family life, relationships, you know, things that will help get us up to speed so that we're, we're able to view all the cool scenes you're going to show us and really understand their significance. All right, so, you know, if, if John's about to go on the roller coaster and first you give me a little tell about um, how he's been afraid of heights his whole life and nobody in his family ever goes on roller coasters and they're all terrified of them, like, whoa, now it's so much more significant. Okay, so that's number five. Use your tells to summarize the information we need to know to make the shows really significant. Number four way to use tells in your writing is to fast forward through the boring parts. <laughs> and specifically when those boring parts are going to cover a long period of time. Maybe the scope of your novel is years or decades or hundreds of years. Well, we don't want you to take us on shows. We don't want to live moment by moment through all of that time. Please, as your readers, we beg you, use some tells to get us further ahead in time. Um, whether that, sorry, farther ahead in time, further ahead, farther, further, <laughs> farther ahead in time. Okay, my grammar brain has finally decided. Um, fast forward through days, through weeks, through months, through years, through decades, so that we um, can follow along with the story and not have to live it moment by moment in real time, if that would be significantly long. And again, you're going to use that top, um, that number five tip, which is to fast forward through the parts that aren't significant. So that we're getting, you know, the backstory and we can also move forward in time. The number three top tip for using tells in your writing is establish, using them to establish a pattern or a repetition or a tip or of activity or behavior. Yes, we want to be able to watch your character make decisions, important decisions. But once we've seen what the significance of that choice is, 
if you want to show us that that's a pattern, you don't have to have us relive live each one of those subsequent decisions. You could summarize, you could tell us about the next time he did the same thing and the next time he did the same thing. Um, or even, um, you know, summarize a different scenario, but we get to see that it's like the same kind of choice he's making. That character is repeating that same old pattern. Um, we, we care more at that point about the pattern. Once you've shown us what that behavior or that choice is once, then really what we want to be able to see is it just keeps happening and just keeps happening. Because again, that's going to set us up for some really cool show later on where the choice will come up again and this time your character will decide differently and be like, oh yes, your character grew, it changed. All right. So that brings us to the number two top way to use um, tells in your writing. I love this one. And I think it's one a lot of writers don't think about, but it's so that you can create space between planting seeds, like whether that's foreshadowing or, you know, something you are going to use later, but you don't want to be really obvious in people's faces. Create space between when you first present that idea and the payoff of that idea to add suspense. So if you can think back to um, being a little kid and telling stories, whether you are writing them down or you're telling them out loud, I bet, because most little kids do this, I bet you have told a story or maybe your kids have told you stories, you've heard a story where a young writer is like, okay, and then um, Megan went to go fight the monster. And by the way, Megan had a magical sword, right? And then Megan fought the monster with her magical sword, right? And it's a very cute thing when little kids do it, but we certainly don't want to be doing it in our grown-up writing. Um, you know, waiting until we need the tool to introduce the tool or you know, a tool or a power or a circumstance. So you want to plant that early on. And if you make it into a show, you're going to draw a lot of attention to it. And then people are going to guess, oh, that's significant. And there's going to be some payoff. So that should be a tell. And then in between there and when it's used and there's a payoff, you can also have tells to create space. So um, this is a really, really sophisticated way to write, you know, it's very different from that, by the way, she had a magic sword. So she used the magic sword, right? You want to um, very subtly plant those seeds and that's um, something you could do with tells. Okay, you ready for my number one reason, my, my number one way to use tells. And remember, this is the one I said actually allows you to show better. It allows you to become better at showing and it will give your shows the punch they need. Because my number one way to use tells is to give your reader downtime. Ooh. <gasps> kitty sighting. Oh, please, kitty. No, wait, kitty, don't. Ah, no. He's going to pull down the sheet and then there's going to be this huge glare from the sun reflecting. <laughs> okay. Um, if you are showing me, showing me, showing me, showing me, showing me, that's such a powerful experience. I'm there. I'm I'm in the moment and it's really emotionally intense. And depending on your genre, it might also, you know, be really scary or really sexy or really, it's really something, you know, whatever your genre is. It's a lot. As a reader, I need breaks. I need downtime. And when you break up intense scenes or intense moments with a tell, I get a little downtime. Why is that important? It means I get to digest the emotion that occurred in those intense show scenes better, which means I will then be able to tune in to the show that you're going to give me the next like really vivid scene that you want me to have a front row seat at. I'm going to be able to be more present and more focused in the next scene because I will have gotten some downtime. Isn't that super cool? So it turns out by balancing your shows and tells and by using your tells to give readers a little bit of a break, you're actually going to give them the chance to appreciate your artful shows better. All right, so I'm gonna recap. These were the top five ways to use tells, not just because you have to and I can't show everything, but to get excited about tells and to see how summarizing or, um, you know, drawing conclusions and leading your reader to certain thoughts uh, is actually a really powerful part of your, your writing process. Okay, so the top five were, my number five was so you can summarize events and move through time, uh, or fast forward and move through time. Uh, 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 sorry, that was number four. Five was summarize events for context and clarity. 
so you can tell people the information they need to know. Number four was fast through, fast forward through a significant ah, 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 amount of time. <laughs> Number three, establish a pattern or repetition of an activity or behavior so that we can see your character doing it over and over again, but we only need to see it the one time and then you can tell us about it the other times. Number two was create space between a seed you've planted, like some foreshadow, and the fruition of that event um, so that we add some suspense and we're not sure what's going to happen in between and we don't guess the outcome right away. And the number one way to use tells is to give your reader that all important break between the intensities of your shows. So I hope that you take these top five tips and apply them to your writing and really embrace a balance of shows and tells. There are some things that we want to see up close and personal. There are other things that you as the author can simply tell us about. And finding that balance is actually what makes for great writing. So I encourage you to start playing around with this, to start looking at scenes and asking, is this something I can show? Is this something I can tell? And let's keep the conversation going. If you have more questions or more thoughts about shows and tells. Um, ooh, Mike says, how about to set up by means of flashback? what is about to happen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I totally dig it. And you'll start coming up with these creative uses of them. So if you just sit in that freedom for a minute of like, oh, I'm allowed to use tells. It doesn't have to be everything is happening in real time and you're seeing it and smelling it and touching it. Um, then you'll start coming up with these really inventive ways to use summary um, to help you know, build more, like th if you think of your tells as a way you can help us um, put our focus on exactly where you want it to be. So it's this, you know, this really nuanced way of getting us to focus on just the right thing. Yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic idea, Mike. I dig it. All right. Um, thank you so much for watching. And again, please comment if you have thoughts about shows and tells, or um, if you have questions you want to ask, I will come back through the comments and answer those questions. All right. I wish you happy writing and take care for now.